Okay, raise your hand if you thought Paul Mahalan was going to be baseball's best pitcher after three turns in the rotation. Come on, raise it. Liar! Put your hand down. You did not. Maham is an eight-year veteran with a career A of 4.25 coming into the season and a whip of almost 1.4. It's almost like nobody told him that he sucks and he just doesn't know. Maham tossed seven and two-thirds scoreless innings Sunday, allowing just one runner to reach second base over the first seven innings, finishing with seven strikeouts and just one walk. The wily left-hander has not surrendered a run in over 20 and a third innings to open the season, winning his first three starts, posting a 4 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio and a whip of just .79. Oh my god! If you own him, stop what you're doing right now and trade him for someone very, very good to someone who plays fantasy baseball very, very bad. And how about Matt Harvey? The kid is making like Doc Gooden in 1985 with Mets fans actually looking on the calendar to see when he's pitching so they can purchase tickets to games. How about that? People wanting to go see the Mets. Harvey took a no-hitter into the bottom of the seventh on Saturday and became just the second player in the last 60 years to open up a season with three starts of at least seven innings with fewer than three hits in each. So check out these gaudy numbers. He's 3-0 with 25 strikeouts in 22 innings with just 6 walks. With 13 starts now under his belt, Harvey has a career RA of just 2.21 and a whip of well under 1. That's almost half a season's worth of Major League action, proving that this kid is no fluke. Now for some offense. Is there any doubt that Justin Upton wanted out of Arizona as much as the Diamondbacks wanted him gone? Upton hit his Major League leading 7th home run on Sunday. Last season, he didn't hit his seventh home run until June 23rd. Justin won't hit the 94 dingers he's on pace for, but if he remains healthy, he's a virtual lock to surpass his career high of 31, and in a big way. Keep him active in your lineup, and if you don't have him, go out and get him. And if you haven't noticed, there are two second basemen in the National League East quietly trying to grab your attention as worthy of being core members of your fantasy team. I don't think there's any question about the health of Chase Utley at this point. With two home runs, 10 RBIs, and three stolen bases in his first 12 games, it's time to return him to his rightful place among the status of the second base elite. And what about Mets second baseman Daniel Murphy? Now I'm not suggesting that people are looking to buy tickets to see Murphy too, but the Murph is hitting 381 driving the ball. With two home runs and 11 RBI in as many games, he's among the league leaders in slugging percentage at 690. Is it possible that at 28 he's developed some power? Starting in only 77% of leagues, he may be someone you want to take a flyer on. Now over in the MASH unit, injuries to Zach Grinke and Jose Reyes this weekend were simply devastating. Like both the Dodgers and Blue Jays, fantasy owners no doubt spent plenty of money on these two. So with that, we bring in our own Pat Mayo to talk a little bit about what you do now that you have all the salary sitting on your bench. Pat, I know you paid quite a bit of money for Reyes in the league that we play in. I imagine you felt much like Reyes did when you watched the video. Did you pull your shirt over your head like he did? I had to, of course. Uh, thank God I bought Troy Tulowitzki in that league as well, or I'd be pretty screwed. All right, so let me ask you this. Basically, when you drafted Reyes, you drafted his legs. So surely when he comes back, he can't be the same base thief that you were counting on when you got him, right? I'm not actually all that concerned about his speed, maybe for the first week or so, but he's a shortstop. If he doesn't have full mobility, he can't play his position, so he's not actually going to return until he's 100%. Well, looking like he's going to be out for the better part of three months. So if I'm a Reyes owner, who are the guys that I should be looking to fill a spot with? It all depends on the size of the league. In shallower formats, Josh Rutledge is still lingering on waiver wires. I know he's hitting below 200 right now, but he still managed to score 10 runs and swipe three bags. He has a home run. Uh, if he's not available, he's a great buy low either way, because once his average comes back up, he could be top 10 at the position. Uh, going a little deeper on waiver wires, Johnny Peralta is widely available, and he plays in the right lineup to pick up some gimme runs and RBIs with a bit of power as well. The Astros' Marlon Gonzalez is getting plenty of playing time right now, and he's been hot, at least. I don't think it's going to last, but he's a quick fix until he can find someone better. And in AL-only leagues, where this probably hurts the most, you may have to roll the dice on a backup with some upside. Fortunately, Eduardo Escobar of the Twins is still out there. He's almost universally unowned, and he's looked good in limited play, qualifies across the infield, and he's going to eventually see some more at-bats, so I like him a lot. Pat Mayo, everyone. Check out Pat Mayo's Daily Fantasy Triple Play every afternoon right here on RotoExperts.com. Okay, moving on to Grinky, here's my take on him. 
The injury is not on his pitching side, so he shouldn't have any problem performing when he comes back. Also, down the stretch, he's going to be much fresher than some of the other aces in the game and should be able to put up decent numbers in the second half. I would try to trade for him because there are many who simply won't be patient enough to have him sit dormant for two months. Derek from San Jose, California asks, I picked up St. Louis first baseman Matt Adams this week. What are your thoughts on it? Derek, I actually tried to nab him this week for $3, but I was outbid by someone who bid 5 bucks. For now, it looks like he's getting his playing time when Carlos Beltran doesn't play because Alan Craig goes to right field, freeing up first base for him. He's only 24 and put up monster stats in the minors. I don't think he's going to be the next Albert Pujols in St. Louis, but if you have him in a keeper league for a good price, you may be onto something. If he keeps hitting like this, they're going to have to find some at bats for him somewhere, and eventually, they'll have to find an everyday position for him. Did you see where the Twins tried to announce that they would charge $15 for a select group of fans to watch the Twins take batting practice? They called it an early entry program. Is it just me or does that sound like something NASA does in emergencies when they want to get astronauts back to Earth early? Have you been to a game at Target Field lately? This weekend's games against the Mets were played in sub-freezing temperatures, and Sunday's game was basically snowed out. They can't sell tickets to the games themselves, and now they're trying to squeeze children trolling for batting practice home run balls, banging them $15 each? When the media circulated the news of the attempt to squeeze the Twins fans, all 80 of them revolted, causing the team to put out a second press release stating the early entry program outlined in the release was not fully vetted across the Twins organization and there would be no early re-entry program. Really? So you tried to screw the fans without Vaseline and when they turned out to be prudes you apologized? Come on! I'm guessing the next thing the Twins will try to do will be the invoice ticket holders adding a surcharge to tickets for games that they win. Although. That'll probably be okay with fans, as everyone will quickly realize that it means no additional costs. For Roto Experts, I'm Mike Cardano.